In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Queen of the Missions, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate St. Francis Xavier, the great Jesuit missionary who is the co-patron of the missions along with St. Therese of the Child Jesus. St. Francis Xavier is really the the active, you might say, aspect of the missionary activity of the church. It says in this book, the apostle of the Indies was born at the castle of Xavier in Navarre, Spain in 1506. He was of noble descent, and at the age of 18, he went to Paris to study philosophy. About four years later, St. Ignatius Loyola, came to the same city and took up his abode in the College of St. Barbara, to which St. Francis belonged. At that time, St. Francis was full of the world and ambition, but the company of St. Ignatius (coughs) (coughs) exercised such a beneficent influence upon him that he grew to be a changed man and became one of the first disciples of the saint. When we think of St. Francis Xavier, we don't realize that he was a very worldly, even might say a, a, maybe like a college student today who was just going to college because it was a good place to party. You know, it was a place where he could meet uh, people and have a good time. But uh, the grace of God changed him to see that there was something more important for him to do with his life. If in 1536 he went to Venice with the first companions of St. Ignatius, after visiting Rome, he was ordained a priest at Venice in 1537, and the first Jesuits made their vows before the Pope's nuncio. Shortly after the society had been established, St. Francis was sent to Portugal. In 1541 he set sail for India, which was to be the field of his labors for the rest of his life and landed at Goa the following year. From that city which he completely reformed, his apostolic labors extended to the coast of Malabar, (coughs) to Travancore, Malacca, the Maluccas, and Ceylon. And in all these places he converted large numbers to Christianity. In 1549, He carried the light of faith to Japan, of which he became the first missionary, and where a flourishing Christian community soon arose. He remained in Japan two years and four months and returned to India in 1551. He then turned his eyes to China. After visiting Goa, he set sail in 1552 to carry out his resolve, but God was satisfied with his will. On the 23rd day after his departure from Malacca, he arrived at Sansian. On November 20th, a fever seized him, and alone upon a foreign shore, he died on Friday, December 2nd, 1552, at the age of 46. And he was canonized in 1602 by Pope Clement VIII. So we see that A very young man, you know, for 46 years old, accomplished many great labors for the faith. And in this year of the faith, we are reminded, you know, as Pope Benedict has said, that this year of faith is not only a time to redouble our efforts, but also to pray for those who are engaged in the mission of the church ad gentes, to the people who have not yet heard the gospel. You know, St. Francis Xavier was greatly um, filled with zeal for this mission, the importance of bringing the faith to those who had not yet heard of the saving work and message of Christ. Because he took seriously our Lord's words 
to go out and baptize them. And if they received baptism, they would be <clears throat> they would be saved. And if they rejected it, they would be condemned. That's the importance of the message that the church has. It is for the salvation of souls. And he even lamented the fact that so many in his day, especially the university professors back in Paris, were, you know, maybe living in their ivory towers and weren't concerned about the most important thing. And that, you know, they had a great task, just as he had a task, to impart the truth and to help lead people to Christ. And um, that they, he thought that so much of their efforts were being wasted. <clears throat> and he could probably run through the halls of universities today and have the same complaint that universities where they are supposed to be leading people and forming them in the truth are rather indoctrinating them into a bunch of a nonsense or even outright lies. Because St. Francis Xavier realized that um, what he was doing was making children for God. It even mentions that in the opening prayer for St. Francis, <clears throat> saying that through our efforts and through the efforts of the church today, may the church have many offspring, for it's at the baptismal font <clears throat> where children of God are born. And St. Francis in his writings in the Office of Readings today uh, talks about how where he went to the people who were so eager to hear the faith that he didn't even have time to pray his divine office or even to eat because they would come to him and ask him to teach him some new aspect, teach them another doctrine or teach them another prayer. And he said, most of my efforts were teaching them about the creed, about the Trinity, uh, the commandments of God, and then I teach them the Our Father and the Hail Mary and baptize them. That was his catechesis, you know, to impart the basics, the foundations of the faith, and then also to teach them how to pray, because prayer will reinforce our faith if we are praying. And it wasn't just an intellectual thing that he was doing. It was also wanting to foster in them devotion, love for God. And that is why he taught them the Our Father and the Hail Mary to help bring about, to help that seed that he planted at baptism to grow. Let us today pray and ask St. Francis Xavier to um, <clears throat> come to the church's assistance today to animate, to inspire missionaries in the far off lands who have a, a great challenge and sometimes maybe discouraging uh, uh, efforts because of their uh, missionary activity, but also to pray for those who are trying to evangelize and re-evangelize the West, which in many cases, St. Francis Xavier saw this um, aspect, even in his own day, where those who were in the, quote, civilized world, in many cases, were less disposed for the truth and eager to receive the faith as these neophytes were out in the missions. As in many cases, many missionaries today who come back from the missions say how they wish they could remain in the missions because the people there are so eager for the truth and that they don't have all the distractions of the iPods, iPads, and all the other things. And the people are really uh, just so uh, eager and desirous to know the faith and to live it and to practice it. Uh, today we need to... Uh, uh, pray and especially to uh, look at our own lives and see, are we being distracted by a lot of gadgets or the materialism around us and distracting us from the most important thing that is growing and fostering our faith 
and growing in that faith because that's our relationship with God, the Trinity, and that we need to maybe get back to basics and um, simplify in many cases our lives so that we can truly um, be ready for the grace that God wants to give us and to open our hearts like these young children in the faith how they were so eager to know and to love and to serve this God that St. Francis Xavier introduced them to. Our Lady, Queen of the Missions, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.